Hey everyone, welcome to the December 2017 edition of Some Arts, the monthly calendar show brought to you by the Somerville Media Center. I'm Dave Ortega, Programming Coordinator for SCAT TV. Let's get to it. I had a chance to sit down with Lily and T from the Somerville Public Library about some upcoming crafting events that they're hosting in December. Here's what they had to say. All right, hello everybody. I am here talking with Lily and T from the Somerville Public Library about some upcoming crafts events that uh, are occurring in December. Um, how's it going? Doing good. Yep, doing well. Welcome to the both of you. Um, now, Lily, you are leading something called Getting Cozy at the Library. Yes. Um, how, how can people get cozy at the <laughs> library? <laughs> so many ways. <laughs> um, so Getting Cozy at the Library is a workshop that's going to, or a series of workshops that's going to be running all winter long. So it actually started in October and will be running through uh, February, uh, mostly on Saturdays, but one Sunday just because of scheduling things. Um, so it's a hookah inspired program, which is this Danish concept of getting cozy. But it's kind of hard to say, so I called it Getting Cozy. <laughs> um, but basically, uh, the program meets for two hours. We uh, sort of dim the lights in the auditorium. Uh, last time I had a fake fireplace up on the projector screen that everybody really liked. Um, and then we have hot cider and tea and cocoa and snacks and then a craft. But people are also welcome to bring their own craft. So I had a bunch of knitters at, at last month's program, like six knitters, and then people also made things because um, I think part of the idea of Hugga is that you meet up with people that you love and you sort of have an activity that you do and you have good conversation. So we've made a couple of things. Um, in November, um, we made these modular felt coasters. Um, so they're just, I cut up the um, felt in advance, but you can sort of design them however you want to design them. And then it's just a little hand stitching thing that you can do while you're chatting with people. Oh, great. Just a fun, a fun thing. Um, and then December, we have these tiny books, which I'm obsessed with. <laughs> um, and you can either just make a tiny book or you can make them into an ornament uh, to decorate your house or office with. So we have The Great Gatsby and Harry Potter, but we had a bunch of sort of classics out and people can choose their favorite book and make these um, tiny books. And those are um, classic covers? Are they yeah. like first edition covers or anything like that, or you're not too concerned with that? I mean, <laughs> they're whatever Google gave me. All right. <laughs> so, but there, I chose these ones because they have um, little book flaps. So, like the interior, you cannot see from there, but um, they have little flaps, um, so it looks more like a real book. That's great. Yeah, they're really fun. Um, I love those. The perfect craft for any book lover. Right? Mm -hmm. And at the library. And then you get this cute little thing that you get to take home, too, or you can give it as a gift. Um, love those. Um, and then in December, we are making the, or I'm sorry, those these are December. In January, we're making these tiny little um, snow globes, which are so cute. Oh, nice. um, and I actually, I got the idea from our young adult librarian, our teen librarian, Ellen. Maybe some of you know Ellen. Um, and they are making them for their, their teen game day and holiday party, which is December 22nd. So they're doing it. And then the West Branch Library is also making these, um, the Children's Craft Renewed Program on, oh no, I forgot to write down the day. I think it's the 13th. Okay. Um, so we're making these at all of the libraries. Um, and Those are cute. Yeah, it's <laughs> great. I mean, it's become clear that I'm obsessed with tiny things. Uh, but it's just a fun way for people to kind of like get together and have something to do with their hands while they connect. And I saw, I've been seeing people like actually making friends and chatting with new people. So it's kind of a nice community building thing. That's what the library is all about, right? Really, yes. Building community, making crafts. Making tiny books. <laughs> and then going to the stacks and looking at books. Exactly, exactly. Great. Yeah. Uh, well, well, and how long has this program been going on? So this is the first year that oh, first I've year. been doing it. It's my first year at the library. Um, but I think it's a success, and I think people would like to do it in the future. Um, we don't have a knitting group at Central right now. We have one at West and one at East, but there's a good group of knitters, so it might sort of... Um, Branch out to the Central location. Yeah, it might sort of like morph into a knitting group. 
past February. Okay. Who knows? Wow, th these are great. Thanks, thanks so much for sharing. Mm -hmm. And now T, um, what is your craft exactly? My craft is called a uh, 3D snowflake or, you know, hand folded snowflake, um, as you can see like right in the background. And um, I've been doing it for like about nine years now. And uh, when I started making them, it's probably like in junior high. So, you know, shout out to uh, Mrs. Carol Fotis <laughs> from Winter Hill. And um, it was something that kind of stuck with me for a very long time. And after I graduated from high school, you know, my hands are always busy. And I started folding paper and I said there was something that I made. Mm. And I probably, you know, cut up, you know, made a bunch of mistakes, like about 50 papers. And then eventually it came back to me after these years and I started making them uh, you know, for charity, uh, for give, and then eventually I started teaching them at uh, the library, um, including the branches as well, and uh, it brought a smile to my face, and, you know, I figured I want to do the same for people, and when I give them as a gift and stuff like that, it, you know, it brings a smile to people's face, and they enjoy making them. It looks complicated, but it's, it's not too bad. It, it, it does look complicated. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what, it, what exactly is involved in the making process of these really great looking snowflakes? You know, for starters, we take an a eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, fold it from, um, from my side, from the left to the right, you know, get like a triangle shape. Cut the bottom strip down like that. So that you could get that square shape. Perfect right. square. People see it, they figure it's origami. Uh, I don't think I can do this, but it's not as bad. And uh, just like a, a duck's mouth, close it up like that. Fold it from one side to the other in half like this. So from here, you get the 90 degree angle Close side, close, open flap. And from there, I'm just gonna turn it this way. You just make a couple of cuts, usually about four, it's pretty good. And those are on the open side? Yep, from the open side, the open side. to the close side. You wanna get as close to the edge as you can, but not all the way. So I'll probably do about two, so can you add more to make it more intricate? You could. Um, I've done probably about seven cuts. Okay. But if you if you leave it hanging, you want to do like about three to four cuts. It lasts longer. Mm. Yeah, because um, I've done it in Concord and they had my snowflake. Uh, they kept it in good shape for about three to four years. Wow. And now they're like kind of like falling down. Sagging. Yeah. <laughs> so less cuts means a more... Yeah, it lasts longer. It lasts longer. Yeah, definitely. Sturdy snowflake. And then when you unfold it, it looks almost similar to like a Christmas tree. Yeah. Open once, you open twice. So this is the beginning. And then the next step, what you want to do is um, you start the folding and the taping process. You want to start from the center, work your way out. So from one side, to the other, left or right, either way, kind of curl it in like that. Is this going to be a full snowflake? This is going to be one piece. Okay. One piece. I was yeah. Yeah, curious. Like, how is he going to make this? <laughs> <just right>. <laughs> how many pieces are in a snowflake? You need about six of these pieces. Oh, wow. And then you divide them into two groups yeah. and then attach the two groups together to get a whole snowflake. So that's one side. Flip it over, take the next set of, fold it in like that, take another piece of tape, just a little tape should hold it. So I call it like the one, two, one, two step. So yeah. one, flip it yep. over to the other. And back when I used to do this back in the seventh grade, we used Elmer's glue. I don't know how that worked, but it held it back then. <laughs> yeah. Takes longer to dry. Yeah. Flip that over like that. A lot of crafts were really messy in 
elementary school or middle yeah. school. But that's the fun part, right? Yeah, <laughs> I just remember. Feel the glue after exactly. That. <laughs> it's always a good feeling. <laughs> so you get it like this. This looks like I call it like a raindrop. Oh yeah. So there's one piece. You need about six pieces to make a whole snowflake. So what I did. Oh, I should have did a separate. So this is like one set. And so this is halfway done. Halfway done. Okay. Yes. And what you do is, uh, I'm going to use on both sides. Is take one tip like this you kind of place it on the side together like that uh -huh. and one staple in the center and then you want to staple the sides so you want to divide them in two sets of threes like this so staples in the center the green to the purple and the purple to the purple right in that center like that so you get two Two sets like this. And stapling, either way, works out the same no matter how you do it. So I'll start the staple on the side, the green to the green. Did you do this part with Elmer's Glue in elementary school as well? Or middle school? I did, but the center, um, we right. used the staple. The staple. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think putting the pieces together all in blue and then putting it together to assemble them, we use the staples. Mm -hmm. I like those colors. Pink to the purple. Yeah, they. you know what they said? The, um, they figured the snowflake is gonna be uh, mostly like, you know, the traditional ones all in white, but um, each one is like different and you can do them from like different season. I have some hanging all year round for the spring, the summer. You could do different holiday, Halloween. Like a flower. Do black and white, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Paper like that. Snowflakes in the winter and flowers in the summer. Mm -hmm. hey, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Nothing wrong with that at all. About one or two staples on the side. I'm gonna put this right over here. And then you wanna put a hook. Kinda use it. You wanna unhook the paper clip like this. Insert it to the top. All the way up, up, like that. Kind of close in the paper clip like this. And can you hold this for one second? Sure. Thank you. And I'm just thinking of how how tiny I could make one. <laughs> like my <impression> <laughs> yeah, we have in the front. Those are like the smaller size. I want to make them even I mean, smaller. Insert the string like this. About one knot, two knot, and then at the top, you want to kind of loop it to make the string and kind of trim off the top. And at the end, get a 3D snowflake or a handful of the snowflake. Oh, wow. Can I see? That. It's lovely. It, it looks really great. Thank you, man. And are you going to have different colors available at the workshop? Yep, I have uh, probably, I think, like over, over a dozen different colors. And that's the fun part. Like, you know, the mixing and matching. Yeah, yeah. Mixing and matching. The kids and the adults, they enjoy it, you know, it makes it more fun. And um, what I use, the one we're going to be teaching for the program, this is the basic, uh, the eight and a half by 11. Mm -hmm. And then when they get used to it, you want to get, you know, a little more of a challenge, make them into a medium size, and then. This is the smaller size, using the same sheet of paper. And uh, for this one, you use the whole sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11. And if you want to like a medium, fold the paper in half mm -hmm. into a perfect triangle. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to get the smallest one, you want to fold the paper again. in quarters, yeah. and then fold each one into a perfect square. That's, that's a little too advanced for me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, well, this, this looks great. And when is your workshop again? It is on uh, Saturday, uh, December 16th. December 16th. From 2 to 4 at the Central Library. Wow. Well, whoever goes uh, to either of these workshops, I'm sure they're in for a great time just uh, making things for themselves and possibly to give as uh, holiday gifts. Mm. Who can ask for a better time? Right. <laughs> Yeah. All right, we encourage everybody to get out to these. Thank you so much to Lily and to T. Thank you. And uh, we hope you uh, go check out the workshops at the Somerville Public Library. Hope to see you there. Yeah.
Now some event listings. Each year the Nave Gallery hosts the Wraparound Sale, a sale of handmade knitted and crocheted and sewn gifts to benefit the Somerville Homeless Coalition. This year these cozy handmade goods will be available to purchase on Saturdays and Sundays through December 31st from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Nave Gallery in Teal Square, 155 Powderhouse Boulevard. Stop by and pick up some scarves, hats, bags, and lots more. Get it for yourself or give as a gift and support the Somerville Homeless Coalition while having lots of fun. More info is at navegallery.org. The Somerville Winters Farmers Market kicks off December 2nd and continues every Saturday through April 14th. Whoa, April, it seems like a long way away. From 9.30 to 2 at the Armory on Highland Ave. This weekly market offers the best locally grown and regionally produced agricultural items including vegetable produce, cheese, eggs, meats, fish, breads, pastries, chocolate, and wine. While with uh, rotating guest vendors each week as well as live entertainment. Cash is accepted of course. SNAP EBT credit and debit cards. SNAP users receive $10 each week to spend on purchases just for showing up. Show your EBT, EBT card at the manager's booth for $10 in tokens to spend on SNAP eligible items from any vendor. More information is at somwintermarket.org. The annual Christmas tree lighting will officially start the holiday festivities on Thursday, December 7th at 5.30 p.m., followed by a meet and greet with Santa Claus at the Somerville High School Culinary Arts Bistro, atrium entrance. Santa Claus will be escorted by the Somerville Fire and Police Departments for the ceremony and will be available for photos following the tree lighting. All children attending the ceremony will also receive a gift from Santa. Live entertainment for the event will feature the Somerville High School Band and Chorus, the Somerville Community Chorus, and El Sistema Somerville. Following the tree lighting, Refreshments will be served at Somerville High School, where children will be able to meet Santa once again. More information is at the city's website, somervillema.gov. On Friday, December 8th, from 7 to 9 p.m., join Historic Somerville and the Somerville Museum at the Somerville Museum Winter Holiday Party at the Somerville Museum at 1 Westwood Road. This event will have live music, good food, entertainment, and great cheer for all. All are welcome. There will also be a raffle for prizes, a historic costume fashion show with the local history club members of the Somerville High School, and you'll be able to buy unique gifts for that Somerville history enthusiast. Admission is $8 to the public, free to Somerville Museum members. More information and tickets are available at somervillemuseum.org. Union Square Main Streets, who we love, in partnership with local businesses, brings the third annual Union Square Holiday Stroll on Saturday, December 9th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. There are some amazing offers from local businesses, Santa once again, craft fairs, a holiday decoration contest, and more. For details, go to unionsquaremain.org. Once Ballroom, hosts the Rockin' Holiday Flea Market and Bloody Mary Bash, Sunday, December 10th from 11 to 5. Over 40 vendors selling vintage, vinyl, collectibles, clothing, nicks and knacks, handcrafted items, music, gear, jewelry, plants, and art. As an added bonus for the 21 plus crowd, there will be a full bar and pizzas available to order. Although you don't really need to be 21 to order pizza, but anyway. Kids are welcome too, and there will be face painting, pool tables, video games, a Panda Claus photo booth with music by DJ Mike. Admission is free, but organizers are asking shoppers to bring a small toiletry item such as razors, shampoo, soap, etc., to donate to residents of Rosie's Place. More information is at onesummerville.com. On Wednesday, December 13th, it's the 13th-ish annual Boston Christmas Cavalcade for the homeless, once again at Once Ballroom at 156 Highland Ave. The show starts at 7 p.m. and features musical acts such as the Chandler Travis Philharmonic, Livingston Taylor, Jen Kimball, the boy with the amplifier head featuring Sal Baglio, Mary Amsterberg, Carla Ryder, Sarah Borges, Duke Levine, Alastair Mook, 
Amy Fairchild, Jenny D, Aaron Harp's Country Blues Trio, the Boston Typewriter Orchestra, Ken Field, Boogaloo Swamis, Bird Mancini, the Danny Deveru and Ding Donnelly Christmas Special, Sean Wardis, the Classic Ruins, the Philharmonic Trombone Shout Band, and the Apple Fingerup. With more to be announced. Suggested donation is $20 in advance and $25 at the door. All proceeds, which is amazing, goes to the Somerville Homeless Coalition. More info and tickets at onesomerville.com. On Saturday, December 16th, all are invited to the Somerville Arts Council's Illuminations Tour. Tour guides, including myself, will lead trolleys past some of the city's most spectacular displays of holiday lights, sharing stories about the families that decorate and providing local trivia en route. Tours depart from City Hall Concourse every 45 minutes beginning at 4.30 p.m. Refreshments, choral music, and craft activities will be available inside City Hall. Trolley tour tickets will be available at the Blue Cloud Gallery, 713 Broadway, beginning on Sunday, December 3rd. Tickets are $15 for adults and $8 for children and seniors. If you're interested, get your tickets as soon as they go on sale because tours sell out fast every year. I'm serious, do it. For more information, visit SomervilleArtsCouncil.org. The Somerville Ceremonial Menorah Lighting will take place on Tuesday, December 19th at 5.30 p.m. with Rabbi Eliana from Temple Benai Brith. All members of the community are invited to join Mayor Curtitone and city staff for a brief ceremony and photo on the city, call, city hall concourse. The menorah will be lit each night of Hanukkah, though the ceremony will officially take place on the final night of Hanukkah. Light refreshments will be served. Put on your best ugliest sweater and stop by the main library for a festive evening of mingling over hot cocoa and snacking on popcorn while watching classic holiday shorts. Favorite things, a holiday movie night starts at 5.30 p.m. and the family-friendly film viewing will start at 6.30 p.m. This program is sponsored by the Somerville Public Library and the Somerville Media Center. For more information, visit somervillemedia.org. Kick off the new year at the 242nd Grand Union Flag Raising on Prospect Hill, New Year's Day, Monday, January 1st. As always, members of the public are invited to participate and are encouraged to wear traditional colonial clothing. The annual ceremony commemorates the raising of the nation's first official flag featuring 13 red and white horizontal stripes atop Prospect Hill on New Year's Day, 1776. At the time, Prospect Hill was a key site in a string of fortifications created by Washington and the Continental Army in their siege of British troops in Boston during the first year of the American Revolution. For details, visit the city's website at somervillema.gov. We hope that you've enjoyed watching Some Arts this year. If you have any feedback, let us know how we're doing at the newly relaunched somervillemedia.org. And if you're an event producer and you want to feature your events either on Some Art or on the SCAT TV Community Bulletin Board, send an email to the same address right there and include the event name, date and time, venue, summary, and contact info. Have a warm holiday season. Celebrate your loved ones and your friends. Be good to each other and we will see you in the new year. For Somerville Media Center and Some Arts, I'm Dave Ortega.